Good morning. I'm Dr. Margaret Ames, and you're listening to Your Dental Health. The mission of the show is to get the word out about a, a major paradigm shift in dental care. It's called biomimetic dentistry, where it values the life of your tooth structure. It's not amputational. And for you to experience more comfortable, less invasive, and beautiful dentistry. I can be reached in my Huntington office at 631-261-4525. That's 631-261-4525. I have our producer, David Levenstein, here with me today. He had a few questions that he wanted to ask me. So, uh, Dave, welcome to the show. And thank you for, th- first of all, thank you for being here on the radio station with us. It's a great show. It's very, very informative. And while I sit in the back recording your shows, there are a lot of questions that come to my mind, okay, when you talk about biomimetic dentistry. Now, you talk about... Um, in the last show that you spoke of, it was Civil War dentistry versus what's going on today. And so when I think of the Civil War, I think of these old movies that I see. Someone gets shot in the leg, they're just whacking off legs. They're whacking off arms, right? Is that what exactly. you're referring to? Yes. So when there's a problem, the old-fashioned way was just to pull out a tooth or jam in some lead filling there or and just send you on your ways, right? Right. Because I got lead in my mouth. I'm sure anyone who was born in the 60s or 70s has lead in their mouth, right? Well, we have some... Pretty pretty bad metals in there, yeah. Right, exactly. I mean, you know. So, mercury is probably the one that, that people worry about the most. Like the one I have out here, Ash Mercury. Is that Mercury? Is that what Silver, that is? Silver, Mercury, some other metals in there. Right. But doesn't that also cause cracks in the teeth after a while, right? Yeah, it expands. Right. I mean, when you think of it, when you have your temperature taken when you were a kid and, th- and the thermometers had mercury inside, right. as your body warmed it up, the mercury expanded. Right. That's the same thing that happens in your mouth. Okay, so the reason why it expands is because it's mercury. It's an expandable metal because heat will cause it to expand, and that causes cracks in the tooth. Exactly. And then you have to get a cap. Well, in the old way, yeah. Mm -hmm. But your new way is saying no. So then what goes in its place? There is um, composite resin restorations, Mm -hmm. which happen to be beautiful and tooth-colored, but actually done biomimetically. They're healthier, they're stronger, and they, re- they eliminate the need to amputate so much tooth structure for a cap. So when you, oh, when you like, and I, I have to tell you, I, I got to be honest with you, I'm single, and I date. And I'm not saying I look in people's mouths before I decide whether I want to kiss them or not, right? <laughs> but when you're having a conversation with somebody, you can see if they got a lot of metal going on there. Yeah. Or a lot of dental work. Bad dental work specifically stands out, you know. It really stands out a lot. Mm-hmm. And um, so when you think it's, it's tooth colored, so when you're getting these, um, these uh, um, they're, resin. Not, they're not, it's resin, mm-hmm. now you, when you open your mouth, it's, it's going to look like your mouth. It's going to look like teeth, right? Yes. So it's not going to look as though this one's lighter, this one's darker, this one's yellow, this one's green. I mean, sometimes you see so many different colors going on in people's mouths. Yeah, and so many different colors of white on the front teeth, which and is scary. The worst. Yeah. <laughs> Right. And why is that? Are dentists lazy in general? So they say they're just throwing something in that's close enough because the chart says, oh, this works? I would never criticize dentists. I think they're all really working hard I'm sure. what they do. I'm um, sure they are, but are I, they I could criticize them. Um, they're really doing their best. Right. Um, it takes sometimes a little bit more time right. to get the right shade. Um, right. Sometimes I'll send, uh, if, if a patient has had a cap or a crown in the past and it right. fails... I have no choice but to do another cap or crown if that initial one failed, which they do. Right. So um, I'll send it to the lab, and if it's a tooth that shows in their smile, it's critical that the color matches. So I take photographs, I send anything on the color chart that I can, and if it comes back and it's not acceptable to me and or the patient, right. I'll put the temporary back in. I'll say, you know, you have to add a little bit of a yellow or a little bit of a gray tone to it because it has to look like all the other teeth. Right, because nobody's teeth teeth are 100% pure white. And when you see very, very white teeth, it almost looks unnatural. Yeah, it, it, like like dentures. <laughs> right, like dentures. Right, it just doesn't look right. Yeah. Now, when people get caps, what a normal cap, what is the procedure? The, a dentist has to file down the, the, the tooth? Yeah. And then put the replacement tooth on top of it? Yeah. It takes out all the old filling, the silver, even the old composite. Uh, it takes that all out. It takes out the decay, right. and then looks at the rest of the tooth and says, okay, now I've taken out all those middle parts. Right. Now I have to get a cap on this. So they have to take away all the good parts that are left on the outside of the tooth. So that's... And how do they? And what do they use to file it down? Literally, literally a metal f- file? It's a drill. That, and, <gasps> that drill that everybody hears? Yeah, yeah. That rings in your ears, that awful sound? <laughs> that, you know that I believe is probably the scariest sound in the world? When you're sitting in a waiting room, and, and of a small dentist office, and you, when you hear that drill in the background, 
It actually sends sh- it's, it's like scratching your nails on a blackboard, except it's in your mouth. <laughs> it's an awful, awful experience. But you, this doesn't happen in this type of dentistry? Well, if you have to take off an old cap, it's you, gonna you do have to cut it that way. And right. the, the bits, we call them burrs, and they can be a certain kind of metal or they're impregnated with diamond particles. You know, it depends upon what I'm removing. Right. Um, but I didn't get to tell you about air abrasion. Now, with air abrasion, it sounds much quieter than a drill. Right. You can't use this to take out old fillings, old silver fillings uh-huh. or crowns. But you can do it if the patient has not had um, a silver filling there before. Right. So th- most people don't even need Novocaine for that. So I use air abrasion. It's a sandblaster. And I just use it in a controlled way. It's quiet. Patients love it. So what happens where, if you have a very sensitive nerve? Is it gonna, are they going to feel it? If they have a sensitive nerve, I can always give them Novocaine if they need it. Right, right, right. You know, which I'll go to that. I'll give patient options. I'll say, you know, some people say, don't, come, don't even look at me with that Novocaine. And other patients say, do anything you can not to do Novocaine. So I ask them. Do people not want the Novocaine because they don't want the shot? Many people, for many people, that's the reason. It's the shot. It's the shot. Because yeah. once you get past, the, once you get the, past the initial pinch of the shot, then you don't feel anything. You know, it's just that first needle in the gum that really just kills. Well, when I was in dental school, yeah, I had a tooth crack and I had to have a new filling. You did. I did in okay. dental school. I was away from my family dentist, and one of my faculty members treated me, and I was like a baby. I'm so afraid of the needle myself. Right. So you can bet that I refined my technique. That mm. it's not going to hurt. It I is. mean, I really, that's a big priority for me. Tell everybody how they can reach you. Oh, they can reach me in my office at 631 261 4525. 631 261 4525. I'm located in the town of Huntington. My website also has a section on biomimetic dentistry. Okay. And there's another website, Find a Biomimetic Dentist, which has stuff for lay people. It says for patients. Right. They can research this more. Yeah. But, folks, if you have dental work, if you're afraid to go to the dentist, you need to call. Um, Dr. Rames and take it right out to her office. This is this is a woman who actually cares about what you're going to feel after you leave the office. It's not just the fact that she's going to fix your tooth. It's you're not going to be afraid to come back. And I think, do you think that's a big reason why people avoid going to the dentist is because they're afraid? Absolutely, they are. And I had one woman that her teeth were very unattractive, and she just said, "I, I just have to do this. I just have to do this. I need I need something. I need a sedative." And so I wrote a prescription for her. Mm-hmm. She came back the second visit, and she said, I didn't take it, but let's try it. By the third visit, she said, I don't need that. Right. It's lovely here. You guys are so great, and you really you really care. That's the biggest compliment I can get. Right. So, yeah, that, yeah. that's pretty exciting. That's, tell people again how they can reach you. It's they important. Can, they can reach me at my, uh, 631-261-4525. Right. So if somebody has an old... Were you talking about? And we're gonna we we'll cover it on the next uh, segment, but and we'll get it. But we're going to not touch on it now. Um, you said there are little little spaces in between the cap and the real tooth that bacteria and other kinds of infection can actually get in there. That's right. We may not see it with our eye, but it, it's big enough for something to get in there to infect you. It could be food particle too, no? Yeah. Right, and that can affect the tooth, the good tooth underneath. That's right. So you can actually get a cavity underneath your cap and not know it, and not until know it. it's too late. Right. So this type of dentistry that you're talking about, this adhesive, it, there are no gaps and nothing is going to get in. There's a, technically, you know, I'm a scientist, so I have to tell the truth. Yeah. So technically, there is a micro gap, but it's smaller than one germ. One germ can't fit in. So, right. you know, for the physicists out there. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tiny gap. It's a tiny, tiny gap. that's almost immeasurable. Right. It's sm- thinner than, your, than a piece of hair. So the truth is, um, and we're going to talk about the cost of it when we come back. But in the, over the long run, it's probably a much more cost advantage to um, to do this type of dentistry because you're not going to have to come back and, and have your cap removed, have a filling put in there, the cap put on. It's going to be like a nightmare. That, that's right. Right. Yeah. And how often are you seeing patients that are coming in with caps that they've gotten a couple of years ago or 5, 10, 15 years ago, and there's decay underneath the cap? Too often, I guess. Yeah, it's pretty regular. It's not an yeah. astonishing, like, oh, how did this happen? It's like, oh, that's what happens. That's what happens. And unfortunately, dentists have become complacent and said, mm-hmm. you know, this is what happens. So now we have to replace your cap. I don't remember a dentist ever saying to me, oh, you're going to get a cap, but you just possibly can still get a cavity underneath the cap. No one has ever said those words. You're the first person I've ever heard say those words. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of speechless because... Yeah. I'm it, speechless the fact that... 
that at the last show that you just did with um, with uh, Dr. Day from California, he was in from Utah. From Utah, mm-hmm. that he said that there are only a, a few hundred dentists in the United States that are using this technique. That's right. And I cannot fathom why. Why won't they change to doing something that's that's that that, that, uh, that is in this century versus Civil War dentistry, like you said, is more comfortable for the patient. It lasts longer. And you're uh, and you're gonna give the patient a, a healthy mouth, and they'll have to visit you even less. Why? Why wouldn't they do that? Well, it takes time. Right. Um, you have to commit the time to learning it, mm-hmm. and it takes change. People generally don't want to change. Right. I embrace the change right. because I could get burnt out, and to do something better, uh, maybe it's the words of my father. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing well. But whatever, I I have that inside of me, and. Uh, That's what keeps me going. That's what makes me happy to jump out of bed every morning. We'll be back right after these words. 